Sex Education finally wrapped up with season four, and the last memories from behind the scenes are truly the ones to remember. This season takes viewers to Cavendish College as most of the Moordale students get to have a fresh start, including their former headmaster, Mr. Groff. And this cheerful college is really a fun and challenging experience for everyone, but things got even more exciting during the making of the show. In season four, viewers got to meet one of the latest additions to the series and Otis competition, O, who's also a therapist. One of the most surprising things about O in the season is that she isn't just a good therapist, but a dynamic one who can rap as well. And Thaddea Graham, who plays O, reveals what her favorite part of filming is. The most sex ed moment for me, anyway, was the fully produ produced music video <laughs> with a rap and dildos. <laughs> On the other hand, Asa loved a different moment. My favorite scenes are always when like, we have a big group of people in, like uh, a lot of the sort of actors in together, and it's a bit of a gang of us. We've had a few of those moments, like in episode one, where we're just learning the ropes of this new school was a lot of fun. You will be shocked to find out that one of Asa's favorite moments in the show is the embarrassing scene where Otis exposes his private pictures to the school while giving a very awkward speech. He also especially enjoys the bike scenes. They feel very sex ed to me, so me and Shooty, whenever we're riding downhill on our bikes having conversations, that feels like classic sex ed. Over the years, Otis's house has served many great purposes and has held some fond memories for the characters and even the viewers as well. The home definitely featured in season four, but with a different vibe as Jean tries hard to balance her life between working and caring for her new baby, Joy. So Asa takes us through the studio where many of the scenes were shot, starting from his house in the show. Otis showed how the setup for many locations in episode eight was shot without letting out many details that could spoil the last episode for the viewers. From behind the scenes shots, you can also get a glimpse of the character's wardrobe. And even though you are already familiar with some of these styles, it was still an exciting challenge for the costume designers to pull together on set. And here's why. Yes. Because it was really exciting, because obviously we've come in new this year. Um, it's previously been designed by the same person for the first three series, so coming in as like a new team, taking on something new. So the show got a new team of designers, Daniela Pierman and Marnie Fitzpatrick for season four, and getting to continue such a project was a very interesting one for them. However, Daniela and Marnie had a clean slate to work with because of the many new characters who joined the show. Season four has more gender fluid storylines and characters than in the past. And this was also a massive factor in choosing the right wardrobe. Especially like Roman and Albie, like our two trans characters, you know, and they're a couple as well. So we've had fun with kind of a sort of matching stuff with what they wear. And you might already know the influencers who motivated some of Abby and Roman's wardrobe. I kind of had this influence, this couple on Instagram called the Young Emperors, and they have very, they kind of mirror each other's looks. So we kind of played around with that a bit, didn't we? Aside from that, the clothes that Abby and Roman wear have to be environmentally friendly considering how Cavendish takes plants and uh, keeping the environment green very seriously. So all of these were seriously considered before actually dressing up the cast for their roles. Speaking about clothes, one of the most iconic looks this season was Eric's outfit for the queer party. And just like how Eric had some of his best fun in it, the designers also enjoyed making the outfit. Although there are many changes to wardrobe this season, Otis still kept his coat from the beginning of the series. Otis's wardrobe may have remained the same, but he went through some unprepared switches this season, starting from being challenged by O. Then he also got into a long distance relationship with Maeve and that really affected him. At the same time, Eric was growing distant from him and all these weren't easy for Asa to portray during filming, but Asa is happy to see Otis find his voice. Another essential detail behind the scenes is the looks that the characters wear throughout the season. So they always have each face mapped out and photographed so they can be portrayed on on screen. As you can see, that's the different looks Maeve wore this season. Don't forget that she went through many roller coasters of emotions from being rejected by her writing tutor to having a hard time with her relationship and dealing with her mom's overdose. All these emotions have their unique looks and makeup. Eric had different makeup on his face this season, so Shuti Gawa, who plays the role, also had a face board for the artist to follow. Here's all the diff Shuti's different looks that he has throughout the season. He's still wearing visible makeup, but it's not quite as loud as maybe we left him in series three. The makeup and hair designer, Emily Bilverstone, revealed how Eric was being too careful with his face makeup when he first went to the new school, and that's because he wasn't really sure that the school would be accepting until he saw things for himself and was very proud. So all these 
these were important in the makeup he had on his face. Gatwa is also the most fun cast for the makeup artist, Emily, to work with on set, as she revealed that she enjoyed painting his face for season four. Another character whose makeup was iconic throughout the season was Roman, and Emily revealed some of the tweaks that went on behind the scenes to make the actor, Felix Mufti, perfectly portray the role. She has the letters, um, no, the numbers 2001 tattooed on his chest. But obviously that's sort of giving a game away of how old he is. So we needed to adapt the tattoo that said 2001 and the, the best way that we could adapt it was to put the two into an A and then the two zeros into a double B. So for 2001 not to show up in his character's chest, the makeup artist had to turn the two to A and the two zeros to form B so it could spell out Abby, which makes sense and shows Roman's love for his girlfriend, Abby. However, the most dramatic makeup on set goes to Abby, who Anthony Lexa portrays. Abby's pink hair stands out, but the actress is a natural brunette. And to achieve that color, a colorist was contracted and they had to stay throughout the filming to maintain the hair color. The set is usually filled with a lot of things and people because most of the scenes in the season get filmed simultaneously. So it's an ever-moving uh, sort of process with people scattered all over the place. They actually do move around a lot and the location manager, Dion Dupriz, revealed that the logistics aspect is very delicate. No day is the same. Uh, you know, as I said, we've always got, uh, at any given sort of day of the week, I've got uh, some of my team out uh, prepping or striking a location elsewhere while we have got probably one or two locations being filmed at. And they really have to be everywhere at once so as to get every set ready before the cast finish using another location. The crazy thing about the location and filming of any scene is that it has to be approved by the director and costume designers before anything can be set up. And that's because of the set's one of the things that actually determines what happens in a scene. In the season, viewers saw Maeve in America, but the whole crew didn't have to fly to have this filmed. The art director, Christina Tom, explained how this was achieved behind the scenes, saying, We had to learn to bring America to Britain basically for real this time, so we had some huge, amazing cars, American old cars, and brought in obviously the usual Americana. That was quite a challenge, actually. Throughout the making of the season, the cast was able to take some fantastic pictures, which gave viewers a glimpse of what to expect. In one of the pictures, Mr. Malloy strikes a pose with Maeve, while Otis is pictured with Ruby behind the scenes during the time Otis and Maeve were both struggling with their relationship. They also made some videos while at it, and you can tell that even though there was a lot of work for the cast to do on set, they still found some time to joke around. Funnily enough, the set of this fourth season wasn't always fun, as Gatwa revealed that it was tough for him to film. He said, It wasn't always joyous. I feel like we've outgrown it, and we've given everything we can to it. It fast-tracked me into the downsides of this industry. Gatwa also revealed that the show made him really sad because of some of the discouragements he got while working on set. Behind the scenes, an executive producer told Gatwa that white people wouldn't understand Eric, and that made him pretty angry and sad. What do you think about the details and attention that went into the making of Sex Education 4? Share your thoughts in the comments, and thanks for watching.